I wish children didn't die. I wish they would be temporarily elevated to the skies until the war ends. Then they would return home and when their parents would ask them, where were you? They would say we were playing in the clouds. The poet who wrote this was assassinated by Israel aged 36. His name was Hassan Kanefi. His 17 year old niece died beside him and his obituary said, he was a commando who never fired a gun, whose weapon was a ballpoint pen. And his arena, the newspaper, pages. Is 12,000 lives enough for us to sacrifice our weekends in Starbucks? Is the 25,000 plus bodies stuck under rubble enough for us to stand in the cold? Is the 5,000 plus children who died enough for us to sacrifice our time to write letters to MPs? There is no excuse. I am disabled, I work two jobs, yet I stand here before you, going out and demonstrating almost every single day. So just as I do, when you feel tired and you feel the burden of your sacrifice, you must remember four-year-old Ahmed, who lost his parents in one bombing and his legs in the next. He keeps asking where his parents are and tries to get up and walk. Remember three-year-old Ahmed Shabet, whose parents and four siblings were killed in an Israeli airstrike. Then his father's relatives, he once again survived. And then they did not. Then another strike, that took his uncle, but it did not take him. Boycott and protest is nothing in comparison to the hellish and torturous occupation and genocide that they are facing head on every single day, every single minute, every single second. A final message to the people I love, we love in Palestine right now. We will never give up on you. We love you and in our millions, in our billions, we are all Palestinians and we will never let you die. As we speak, the Israeli army are preparing to wipe out El Shifa Hospital, giving doctors and nurses just an hour or so to evacuate thousands of patients. For the brave doctors and nurses who sacrifice their lives to save patients. I will never forget you. I will never forget your names and your stories. I will continue to tell them until Palestine had its freedom. Every single Palestinian has a face, a name. They had dreams, they had families, and they are being wiped out before our very eyes. Everyone stand up, even if you're just here for shopping, come and march with us. Demand that our MPs stop, stop. They need a ceasefire instantly. They need to stop this bombing. So all of us, we need to be loud as possible. We need to make sure that Tan hears us and hears that we do not accept that he abstained to stop the children. Shame on you, Tandesi. Shame on you. Shame on every politician and every person that has allowed ethnic cleansing and genocide to continue. So join me. Join me and let our voices be heard until our dying breath. I've thought many times over the years, what would I do if I'd been born in a Palestinian in Gaza, witnessing countless atrocities like the ones we're seeing now, surviving under a brutal occupation and for over 16 years, an illegal, totally inhumane siege designed to destroy, slowly, the people in Gaza. If my family had been killed by the Israeli occupying army, how would I react? Why would I care about international law when I know it never applies to the oppressors? If I and my family and friends have been terrorised my entire life, by an oppressive regime that carries out war crimes year after year, day after day, for decades, never punished or held to account, only encouraged and supported by the likes of the United States government, what would I do? I use some words from the reporter Chris Hedges. Terror is the language of the Israeli state, the only language it apparently understands. So why wouldn't I attempt to resist the oppressor, the war criminal, with the language they understand. But we have come out for the future of humanity, a decent human life. Gaza is a testing ground for control, 
occupation and a slow genocide for our tyrannical rulers. The situation is unbelievable. There are no words to describe the man-made destruction, massacres and human misery of an unarmed population. The situation is not complex, but age-old racism and ethnic hatred. Why are we still seeing this in this century? The parcel subjugating and abusing the poor and the occupied. We the people need to stand in solidarity. They are asking us, do you condemn October the 7th? Well, we can say yes, but do you condemn October the 8th, October the 9th, October the 10th, October the 11th, November the 16th, November the 17th, November the 18th? Do you condemn all those days and all those days of aggression? Gaza is a death camp. No one is safe. No babies, no children, no civilians, no paramedics, no medical staff, no journalists, no humanitarians, no hospitals, no shelters. However, what can we do? We have a responsibility to take to social media to attend local marches, to write to our local MPs, to hold our politicians to account. We boycott, divest and sanction Israel and all its profit. When they call our protests hate marches, it was Cruella who had to dog whistle the extremists in. Remember, they brought in the racists and Islamophobic and xenophobes to the marches, whilst the media has also amplified the Islamophobic and racist voices on our screens. Tandesi, our so-called elected voice, you failed us. Abstaining and not voting for a ceasefire, you have given a green light to a colonizing state an illegal occupation. Our ancestors who fought colonialism will be ashamed of you and our future generations will see you as a sellout. Lastly, I want us to pay respect to the doctors, paramedics and all medical staff who refuse to abandon their patients and people in hospitals. contrast the shame of those MPs who have caved into the pressures of the Zionist lobby and have abandoned the voices of the millions who have come out to demand an end to the aggression and genocide of the Palestinians. Palestine! Palestine! Palestine!
Palestine will be free. Palestine. Palestine. Palestine will be free. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free.